first story is titled, Am I the a-hole for yelling at my deceased brother's wife that I'm not her husband? My male 31 brother passed away 16 months ago. I have two brothers and he was the youngest. His wife was pregnant when he passed away and both me and my older brother started helping her every day. We'd take turns in giving her rides to the hospital slash work slash grocery store and would help her with the house as well as other things. However, she stopped calling my older brother and kept calling me to do things for her. I started taking care of the house slash taking her places and taking care of financial issues. I noticed my brother wasn't showing up and helping. She said she didn't want to bother him since he has family and kids and I didn't. So she thought I'd be okay with her calling every minute to ask me to do things for her. Saying I'm single, I don't have family to take care of and so why not help? She even called me for every doctor visit and when she went into labor, I was the one she called. It was a stressful phase and once my niece was born, I started taking care of her as well. My sister-in-law would call me in the middle of the night wanting me to take my niece to the hospital. She'd have me to go with her to certain occasions her friends had. I started getting uncomfortable. I spoke to my family and my brother, who told me she didn't want him to help despite the offer, and it occurred to me that she was just focusing on me supporting her. Yesterday, she came to visit my family while everyone was there, including me. She started talking about what happened last week, my niece getting sick and taken to the hospital, and joked about how the doctor thought I was my niece's dad. My mom was staring at me confused. My sister-in-law then, before I leave, asked if I could go with her to attend her cousin's wedding, since she doesn't have friends to go with. I told her I was busy, and that I won't be going to the wedding of someone I don't know with her. She tried to argue, and got offended when I told her to ask my brother instead. I yelled at her that I'm not her husband, and it was wrong of her to act like that. The whole room went quiet, and they were all staring at me. She got upset and started crying. The whole family sided with her and came at me, saying I was being harsh and cruel to her and that I shouldn't have said such an awful thing. I left after that, and I haven't heard from them since then. I feel bad, and I got to say it's just too much pressure and exhaustion. Now for the top comments. Everyone sucks here. She was taking advantage of you and assuming you would constantly help her just because you were single. That was very wrong of her. But your comment, how you're not her husband, was indeed cruel. There were certainly better ways for you to have broached that subject. Not being the husband is not a cruel comment. She was using him like one, which is massively unfair to him. Being on call for his niece 24-7 would hinder his ability to start a relationship. I'm surprised it took 16 months to snap. There were better ways to approach it, but a firm reminder is sometimes needed, especially after how much he has done. He's not on trial for saying he's not the husband, he's being judged for his approach. You stated a bottom line though, there were better ways to approach it. End of story. A private conversation with her, a conversation with his brother, or a conversation with both at once. The approach was unnecessary and mortifying for the sister-in-law. It was a lapse of judgment that even Opie seems to regret based on the last part of the post. Everyone sucks here. Not the a Admittedly, you shouldn't have yelled at her in front of family. However, presuming you were close to your brother, I'm sure you are also still grieving for him while also being repeatedly forced into the role of his stand-in. It is probably easier for you to help than your other brother because you don't have your own wife and kids, but you are not required to be her escort for social occasions. She could go to the wedding alone. Also, it has been 16 months. At some point, she needs to become self-sufficient. She is an adult. She needs to act like it. I understand that grieving her husband and being a single parent are hard, but forcing you to be the replacement is not a healthy response for you or her. Not the a-hole. People grieve in different ways, but you need to set your boundaries. You were uncomfortable, so you said no. Although you shouldn't have screamed it at her. You could have just told her no and then moved away. Maybe even involve your mom so she can get the point across. I just call a family meeting and apologize to her and tell her that you have boundaries and she needs to respect your space. Also, that you'll be there in your niece's life as an uncle, just like any other uncle. But you're in no way form and shape a pseudo dad to her. I'm so sorry for your loss. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for calling my wife lazy and a terrible mother? This is my first time posting, so excuse me for any mistakes I make. 
I'm a 57-year-old male and my wife is 51-year-old female. We've been married for 28 years and have one son together that is 25. She's a stay-at-home wife. She never worked today after we got married, since I inherited a company that had been in my family for many generations. So money was never a problem and we lived more than comfortably. When our son was little, she took care of him and the house. Now that he's an adult, the chores are the only thing that she does. She used to take on writing but gave up because she said it's not as easy as she thought. Now, I don't consider myself sexist or that woman belongs to the house with kids. This was her choice because she never liked to work. The problem is, I work long hours and expect to at least have a dinner after the long day. We have a housekeeper that comes over twice a week, so her responsibilities are basically cooking and smaller chores. She stopped cooking and doing things lately because she doesn't feel like doing it. She spends her days hanging with her friends and shopping. Also, our son was born as a female and my wife always wanted a daughter. When he came out as trans, she threw a fit and was unsupportive. I paid for his surgery and he transitioned. She was never as caring towards him as before and uses wrong pronouns and his old name all the time. The other day, I came home and she didn't do anything all day and I snapped. I told her that I'm sick of her not doing anything while I'm providing for our family. My son is also still in college and I pay for all of his expenses and apartment because I want him to focus on school. The argument went on and she decided to throw in my face how it's my fault she lost her daughter. This really shocked me and I told her that she is lazy and also a terrible mother for talking as if her child is dead when we have a perfect and healthy son. I am at lost. Half of my family members are siding with her, half with me, including our son. She called me an a-hole and went to stay with her sister. Was I the a-hole? I'm seriously considering divorce. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. I can't believe your marriage has lasted this long based on what you've said. She didn't used to be like this, but ever since our son officially transitioned via surgery, she changed. Have you tried to talk to her about therapy? It sounds like she's not handling your son's transition well. Not that that is an excuse for her actions towards or speaking about slash to your son in that matter, but I know that some people just don't handle any change very well. Considering she's always been a stay-at-home, that could be an indication that she's that type of person. Also, thank you for being so damn supportive of your child. Added to add, the son has been out of the home for 7 years and out of the closet for 11 years and mom has never been accepting. Mom is the a-hole. Therapy might help, but a-holes rarely care to change. Not the a-hole. Thank you for being the supportive parent many LGBTQ plus children dream of. Of course. I always suspected that my son is not a girl, since he was more interested into boys things growing up, but passed it as being a tomboy until he was comfortable coming out. Also, wasn't surprised when he finally did. The next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling husband we shouldn't let mother-in-law live with us? My 44 female, husband 45 male, has always been the black sheep of the family. His parents, mother in particular, have never approved of his life choices and always favored his younger brother over him. And no matter what my husband did, they have never approved. My husband went limited contact with his family about a year after we got married when my mother-in-law demanded he get a paternity test done on our oldest daughter because she didn't believe that she was his child. They have never met our two youngest children and my husband and I have no plans to have them meet unless our children choose to do so. My mother-in-law and I do not have a good relationship and I have not spoken to her in 15 years. Fast forward to last year. My father-in-law passed away and my mother-in-law is not handling it well. Six months ago, she fell and is having a hard time living on her own. My brother-in-law called us last week and demanded that my husband take her in because he is too busy to take care of her. Brother-in-law also informed us that mother-in-law has no money, aside from her small teaching pension, and cannot afford to stay in her house anymore. We asked what happened to the money she received from father-in-law's life insurance, and it was spent. Husband told my brother-in-law we would discuss it and get back to him. I told him that in no certain terms was she coming here. My husband agreed, but feels guilty because she is his mother and will be homeless if he doesn't take her in. So I asked him about how much his mother cared about him being homeless when she threw him out of the house and he was sleeping in his car for three weeks. He said he understood 
and he doesn't want her here either, but he doesn't want her to be on the streets. I suggested we look into adult living facilities slash care homes for seniors that we could move her into, as well as state funding to see if she qualifies. My husband is hesitant because he wants to help his mother, but he also knows that her living with us is just not feasible because of the way she treats him. He called his brother and told him that he didn't think her coming here was a good idea and brought up the suggestion about senior living home, and he flipped out. He called my husband ungrateful and shamed him for abandoning mother-in-law in her time of need. Now his entire family is calling and texting and calling us cruel. Husband is starting to waffle and keeps saying that we could buy a house with an in-law suite. I told my husband that we aren't terrible that we are our own family, and she had multiple chances to be a part of our lives but decided to be petty and hateful instead. So, am I the a-hole for not letting her come live with us? Now for the top comments. So, it's okay for his brother and the rest of the relatives to abandon her but not for you? Not the a-hole at all after what she did to you guys. You reap what you sow. She decided to treat you crappy for years. She can live with her other son or figure something out herself. Exactly. Not the a-hole. They are piling on abuse, like what worked in past cycles against him. Don't buckle up, OP, and help him like you've been doing all these years to stand strong on his own. These people aren't his family because they've shown over decades what they think of him, and their hypocrisy is laughable. Not the a-hole. The brother and family acting all high and mighty when they have not even offered their own homes. The mother does not get to live with your family when she mistreated and abandoned her own son during his time of need. You do not want that kind of person in your own home who could negatively impact your own children's upbringing. You and your husband offered a great alternative solution. Not your fault she did not save or expend a life insurance wisely. But you don't understand. They can't take care of mother-in-law because it's inconvenient for them. It's not their fault. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to get rid of the anime body pillow that saved my marriage? My husband and I are best friends during the day. Love of my life. It's at night that's an issue. I'm a blanket stealer. I once yanked them so hard, poor hubby flipped a full 180. Hubby, for his part, is a thrasher. Bruce Lee would be jealous of the moves he pulls off while unconscious. It's a constant war between us when we fall asleep, and both of us often wake up sore and exhausted. It was starting to affect our relationship. Neither of us wanted to move to a separate bed because we like spending our nights together. But it seemed like an inevitability. We were both crabby every morning, and we started fighting as soon as we got up. It sucked, but neither of us wanted to concede defeat and move to the other bed. Quick background, I was a huge nerd as a teenager. Full on otaku. Go ahead, cringe, I do too. One night, as a joke, I brought down an old anime body pillow from the attic. I know the cringe. And plop it down between my husband and I, declaring it our demilitarized zone. Hubby also thought it was hilarious, and we named her DMZ Chan. She stayed there the whole night. It was a game changer. DMZ Chan protected me from hubby's REM-induced rambages. And she's just heavy enough that I can't yank the blankets at full speed. DMZ Chan is now a beloved part of our nightly routine. We both thought it was the funniest thing, but she legitimately helped us solve the only real issue in our marriage. One day, mother-in-law stopped by to pick something up. She got up to use the restroom, passing by our open bedroom door. You can guess what she saw. DMZ Chan, propped up in the middle of our bed, her giant soulful anime eyes looking right back at mother-in-law. When she got back, she quickly grabbed her stuff and left, Hubby and I both confused. She later mentioned DMZ Chan to Hubby while they were on the phone, and it absolutely mortified him. As far as I know, mother-in-law now thinks we're deviants in a three-way relationship with a body pillow. Hubby was too embarrassed to explain, and now he wants to put DMZ Chan back in the attic. I was upset. I told him I didn't want to go back to boxing each other at night, and that DMZ Chan helped us so much in that. He agreed, but suggested we get a normal, plain body pillow case to replace her. I felt like there was no need to spend money on something we already have, and if it really was that big of an issue, we can put her in the closet while we have company over. Hubby is informed that she has to go permanently. I know he's embarrassed, but I feel we shouldn't have to compromise our inside jokes to appease other people. Am I the a-hole?
Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. The real problem isn't about removing the pillow, but the fact that your mother-in-law made a scene about something that isn't any of her business. Your husband should stop enabling that. I guess I don't understand what the embarrassment is about. It's not like they keep her there because of being fans. It's something that serves as a functional purpose. Why not just tell mother-in-law the truth it was a toy from when Opie was a kid, but we now use it as a bed spacer? Everyone sucks here. Mother-in-law sucks for making such a big deal about it. Husband for not explaining a simple and straightforward situation to his mom and instead having his knee-jerk reaction. You for not taking the reasonable compromise of a plain pillowcase for it. Info. Can't you just take the cover off? Yes, hubby has suggested we get a new pillowcase. My problem is, I feel like he's kowtowing to mother-in-law about a private issue. Edit. Sweet bees this blew up. Was not expecting all the attention. Just wanted to say thank you to everyone for chiming in. I admit I was being stubborn. I drove over to Target on my lunch break and bought a new cover for 10 bucks. I put it on DMZ Chan as soon as I got home. To those asking, I did wash her after fishing her out of the attic. And I'm now waiting on hubby to get home so I can apologize for making him uncomfortable. DMZ Chan shall live on in our hearts and under the blanket when company's over. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.